What's up, comic and pop culture fans? I must have really missed college because I just completed an entire research project. As I'm an avid CGC submitter, I submit books all the time to CGC. Things that are like one or two months old. And I gotta tell you, a 9.8 is never guaranteed. In fact, sometimes you'll submit 25 books, and even though they're brand new, off the press and everything, just printed, they only get 15 out of 25 get the 9.8. I say that because getting a 9.8 should be pretty impressive. The older the book gets, the conditions they were kept in, the page quality, it gets harder and harder to achieve that 9.8. So I set out to find the most spectacular, unbelievable, impossible, seemingly 9.8s that are out there. I scoured the CGC census over many hours to find the first recorded 9.8s of major superheroes, as well as looking at some of the earliest 9.8s ever on the CGC census. So today, we're going to look at the results of my research, and you guys are going to be pretty impressed by some of these grades. First up, let's take a look at the first 9.8 thing ever given. We're going all the way back to 1878. Considering how near impossible a golden age 9.8 is, I think it stands to say that 1878 is even more impressive. I almost didn't include it on this list as it's not a comic and more of a pamphlet, but how could I not mention this? This is Durham Whiffs, number one, distributed from Blackwell's Durham Tobacco in 1878. It's an education pamphlet for children of the joys and benefits from smoking tobacco. You did hear me right. It has several pages with poems and doctors speaking for this tobacco product. Absolutely insane and is the first ever recorded 9.8 paper product it's also one of the few paper products from this era even ever presented, so it's amazing that it has the shocking White Pages Association. As for the first comic book to receive a 9.8 grade from CGC, goes to Funny Picture Stories Supplement, Volume 1, Number 1, in 1937. Originally published in Funny Picture Stories Volume 1, Number 1, this marks the first ever comic book as of today's date to be in a 9.8 grade. Amazingly, the third ever oldest ever recorded 9.8 is a Funny Picture Stories Supplement Volume 3, Number 1, two years later in 1939, also at the unimaginable 9.8 after all these years. Would they use better pulp in their pages than anyone else? In 1938, we have Crackajack Funnies number one. If you're looking for a 9.8 graded copy of any Golden Age comic, your first strategy is probably to find the Edgar Church Mile High Copy Pedigree comics. That works with this issue from 70 years ago. One of Dell's earliest titles followed a common format of the day of reprinting popular comic strips. Over 20 different strips were represented in this first issue, including Dan Dunn, Don Winslow, Buck Jones, Tom Mix, Mira North, Major Hoople, and others. For a while, this was actually the first 9.8 recorded, which just goes to show new books are being submitted all the time and can change this list. Thought I'd throw another pretty rare one in here. We have Star Ranger number 15 from Centaur Publications, this is an incredibly rare book, also from the Edgar Church Mile High Pedigree collection. It's listed as scarce, but it's even more rare by its unimaginable assignment of white pages to this. This was the first issue of the new title that was part of the first Western series, initially called Star Ranger, then Cowboy Comics in comics. Simply unbelievable for a 1938 comic. If you guys are wondering what the first key comic to ever get a 9.8, well, that came in 1939. With Crackjack Funnies, once again, this time issue number 9. This is the first appearance of Red Rider in comics. Yes, the same Red Rider that's responsible for the Red Rider BB gun. This was one of the earliest, most popular Western characters in comics. So far, the previous entries were just kind of random comics that got super lucky and well-preserved. This one's got some real significant history to it. 
Next up, I thought we'd talk about the origin of superheroes in comics. And the first superhero was the Phantom, introduced in 1936. Amazingly, Phantom's first recorded 9.8 didn't come until decades later in 1963, with The Phantom number 3, published by Gold Key Publishers. This sold in 2012 for a depressingly low $1,076. Perhaps if they knew that this was the highest and earliest graded Phantom comic, it would have gone for more. Fair market value sits at $10,000. After The Phantom came Superman. Superman was introduced to us in Action Comics number one in 1938. His earliest recorded 9.8 wasn't until years later in Superman number 28, which was in 1944, in a rare double cover print error, meaning the first cover was valued at a 9.4, but it was printed with an additional cover on the inside that held the perfect unseen grade of a 9.8 and the higher one is the one they go by. Imagine owning a 1944 Superman comic in perfect 9.8 after all these years. It sold for only $22,800 in 2019, but should fetch around $32,000 fair market value. After Superman came Batman, introduced to us in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. His earliest recorded 9.8 wasn't also until 1944, which came in Detective Comics 91. So that's five years from this first appearance for a perfect copy to still be found. A fair market value for this book is valued at around $30,000. The only picture I found was quite blurry, so I do apologize. Also in 1939 came Captain Marvel, which we now know as Shazam. His earliest recorded 9.8 was even sooner than Batman and Superman's in Wiz Comics number 27 in 1942. The current fair market value for this book is around $12,000, a seemingly great deal for Captain Marvel's first ever 9.8. Unfortunately, I could not find a picture of this. So I will show the next 9.8 ever graded for Shazam, which happened to be three issues later in Wiz Comics number 30. A more recognizable character to us modern viewers is The Flash, came around in 1940. His earliest 9.8 wasn't until Flash Comics number 10, which also was in 1940. This beautiful copy of this early Flash appearance sold in 2012 for $19,120. It's currently valued at $27,500. Green Lantern, Alan Scott's version of course, was the Golden Age Green Lantern introduced to us in 1940. His first appearance was in All American Comics number 16, but his earliest recorded 9.8 wasn't until All-American Comics number 24, one year later in 1941. Fair market value is resting at $42,000. In 1941, Captain America was introduced to us in Captain America Comics number one. Unlike all the other early recorded 9.8s on this list, he has the honor of having one total 9.8 of his first appearance, which also happens to be Captain America Comics number one. Fair market value for this one of a kind, only of its kind, major comic book vintage key goes for $1,400,000. Although I think if you own this comic, you're probably not selling. Within the pages of More Fun Comics 73, Aquaman was introduced to us in 1941. Shockingly or unshockingly, his first 9.8 didn't come to two decades later. In Adventure Comics number 280, which is really more of a Superboy story, but it still qualifies for Aquaman's first 9.8, we have this beautiful cover here with a fair market value of $24,000. In 1941, 
Wonder Woman arrived on the scene in All-Star Comics number 8. Five years later, we find our first ever recorded 9.8 in the pages of Wonder Woman number 16. In 2008, this was sold for a shockingly low $10,158. Fair market value now is showing as $26,000, perhaps due to the popularity of the character rising. Personally, I think the first 9.8 for Wonder Woman deserves to be even much higher than that. Another very impressive comic from 1944, this is All American Comics number 61. This is actually the first appearance and origin of Solomon Grundy, longtime Batman villain. There is one CGC 9.8 on the CGC census. A great classic creepy cover and cool Batman villain. Whoever has this better hold on tight. Usually these oddball 9.8s you find from the golden age aren't keys, so it's nice to see ones like this that are. After a long time of only romance and westerns, superheroes made their big return in the late 50s, early 60s. Time for some Marvel entries here. In 1961, Fantastic Four arrived on the scene as the first superhero family. There are no 9.8s in this 1961 classic cover and first appearance. However, just the next issue does have one recorded perfect 9.8 in existence. Fair market value for this second Fantastic Four appearance in perfect grade will run you $150,000. In 1962, Norse mythology met its way into comics with our introduction to Thor. Once again, there are no 9.8s of this mega key issue, nor in number 85, which is two issues later and the first appearance of Loki. The first recorded 9.8 for Thor, however, is the very next issue, and amazingly, there are actually three of these suckers in existence. If only this could have been 85 or 83 but it's number 86. It sold in 2012 for just under $11,000. Thor's first 9.8 deserves a little more than that, don't you think? Fair market value goes for $20,000. In 1962, Spider-Man arrived on the scene and has probably been the most long-lasting, most popular superhero since. He arrived in Amazing Fantasy 15, and while there are no 9.8s of this on the CGC census, except of course for the CGC restored grade version of the 9.8, which does include restorations such as color touch, pieces added, seals reinforced, cleaned, and the interior lightened. Still impressive, but not a true blue label 9.8. His first title, and also happens to be the first appearance of J. Jonah Jameson, has exactly one copy of a 9.8 in existence. Sadly, I can't find a picture. So here's the next grade down that's pictured in good quality and I've artificially put a 9.8 edit over the grade so you can get the idea. Fair market value is resting steadily at $975,000, just under a million. In 1963, we were given the X-Men. And, as luck would have it, there are two 9.8 copies of the first appearance of X-Men in X-Men number one. The most impressive one, and in Pacific Coast pedigree, sold in 2012 for $492,937. It also amazingly was listed as having pure white pages. This copy is currently valued at $950,000. Same year, 1963, we were given the first appearance of Tony Stark, Iron Man, in Tales of Suspense number 39. Just like Captain America and X-Men, the first appearance of Iron Man is one of the lucky few who has a perfect 9.8 in his first appearance, even if there is only one in existence. Fair market value of this epic book is at an absurd $3,400,000. Unfortunately, the one copy that exists is not pictured. So here's the next lowest grade from Heritage Auctions with a doctored 9.8 stamp in front of the lower grade. I wanted to bring up Avengers 4, you know, 
the classic cover that brought Captain America and Buffy back into the Silver Age and features him prominently on the cover. Believe it or not, there are five of these in a 9.8. Each one of these is valued at a very nice $220,000. For the most part, this list is staying away from anything 70s or up, but I definitely thought I'd bring up Hulk 181, and maybe it's not as rare as you guys think. This is the first appearance of Wolverine, and there's actually a decent amount of 9.8s out there, believe it or not. You really wouldn't think so since 9.8s ask for $44,000 from you, but there are actually 139 9.8s in existence as of today's date. But I'm not here to talk about that one. I'm here to talk about the one, the only, 9.9 .9 copy of Hulk 181. There's only one in this rare unicorn of a grade, and its fair market value is nicely at $400,000. We'll circle back to 9.9s in just a moment. Speaking of Hulk, Hulk's first appearance was in The Incredible Hulk number 1 in 1962. It took a few issues for a perfect copy to be found. Interestingly, there's no number 1s that are even quite close to a 9.8 for that issue, so Hulk's first recorded 9.8 is 6 issues later in 1962 in Incredible Hulk number 6. Fair market value for Hulk's first 9.8 comic is sitting nicely at $80,000. I said I'd stay away from the 70s, but I did want to bring up these mega rare ultra keys. House of Secrets number 92, first appearance of Swamp Thing from 1991, a near impossible to obtain book, especially due to its hard black cover and low print run. There are three 9.8s in existence of the first appearance of Swamp Thing. And good luck buying it because it's valued at $60,000 and rising. Next mega ultra key from the 70s is Marvel Spotlight number 5, the first appearance of Ghost Rider. Just like with Swamp Thing, there are only three 9.8s of this mega ultra key that exist. Each one is valued at around $58,000. Green Lantern 76 from 1970 is considered the issue that started the Bronze Age and has become a mega key because of that title. There are only two of this comic. Each one is valued at $45,000. Couple more notable 9.8s for their rarity. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1984. Such a recent issue, but there are only 32 9.8s in existence due to the rarity, page quality, and print count. Thus, a 9.8 for this mega key sells for a whopping $135,000. This is the most expensive 9.8, or just comic in general from the 1980s. And now for the only comic I'll be mentioning from the 90s, the first appearance of Hellboy. In 1993, Hellboy first came out, but it was in an unconventional first appearance as it was hidden in the pages of Italian fanzine Dime Press number no. 4, before emerging as a fully formed character in San Diego Comic-Con Comics number no. 2. As you can imagine, it is quite difficult to find his first appearance in this poorly circulated comic. There do happen to be eight lucky owners of exactly eight 9.8s in existence for this comic. It's a bit of a colder comic in that, despite all of its rarity, it's only a $10,000 comic book. I suspect that the rarity and popularity of Hellboy is going to drive this up in the years to come. So let's talk about those 9.9s. The oldest and first comic book ever to receive this rare unicorn grade of the perfect mint 9.9 .9 goes to Zip Comics number 7 in 1940, folks. Once again, that Edgar Church Mile High pedigree really came through with another great book, this time with a seriously rare grade. A beautiful piece of history here. Wild to think we have a 9.9 .9 comic book from a year before America even joined World War II. The first key comic book in the 9.9 .9 grade came a decade later. 
War Against Crime number 10, which is the first appearance of the Vault Keeper, a character that is one of the most popular narrators to the series of horror comics that followed. Tragically, I can't find a picture of this epic whale of a comic, so I have to find the next highest grade, which does happen to be a respectable 9.8, photographed by Heritage Auctions. And I'm going to superimpose the 9.9 .9 label onto the grade so you can use your imagination. I truly don't know why, if you have one of the rarest, coolest, most expensive books out there, why you wouldn't picture it, but that's just me. The first major appearance in a 9.9 .9 goes to the pages of Amazing Spider-Man number 19, which happens to be the first appearance in cameo of the Scorpion, Mac Gargan. Here's what Heritage Auctions had to say about this. That's not a misprint, Tiger. This is a mint 9.9 .9 copy of this Silver Age book. We look at Amazing Spider-Man issues all day long, and even the really nice ones usually have one of Marvel's notorious overhangs or a shade of Marvel chipping. Not so for this gem, which has perfect corners and edges and superb page quality. You rarely see a book this nice that's a couple years old, never mind one from the days before Mylar bags and the like. Never mind fingerprints, we don't even think anyone's ever breathed on the thing. An outrageously nice book. So let's talk about 10.0s, the gem mints out there. The first 10.0 grade ever assigned to a comic was back in 2000, and it was a rare Lethal Protector number one black printing variant. It sold in 2010 at Heritage Auctions for $3,585. Current value is much higher at around $16,000. But due to Venom's spike in popularity, I think this could hit all the way to $20,000. Plus, it is extremely rare, being a printing error variant. The oldest recorded 10.0 Gen Mint actually doesn't belong to a comic book, rather an advertisement for toothpaste. Colonos presents The White Guard No. 1 from 1949 Whitehall Pharmasol. There it is, one page untouched in brand new perfect plus plus condition with white pages. How do you get some advertisement from 1949 to be in better shape than brand new comics off the press today? I'll never know. And finally, the first and oldest 10.0 assignment to any comic belongs to Thor 156 from 1968. Tragically, I cannot find a picture of this epic whale of a comic. Again, I say, if you've got one of the most valuable comics out there ever, you should photograph that. I found the next highest grade, which is a respectable 9.8, photographed by Heritage Auctions, and I'm going to superimpose a 10.0 label on the grade so you can use your imagination. This sold over a decade ago now for a very low amount. Fair market value of this today would be around $500,000 minimum. So that is the list, ladies and germs. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, a significant amount of research went into this video, so please support the channel by liking and commenting, just giving some general engagement to the video to help the YouTube algorithm with this particular channel. This was a lot of fun, but it was definitely a lot of work. But I've been wanting to know these questions for years. So sometimes, guys, if you want to do something right, you got to just crack down and do it yourself. Anyway, hopefully you found this entertaining. I wanted to thank you again for always being there for me. And as always, keep on collecting.